Caller number one is Peter. I won't say his last name, but he's calling from the 630. Where is the 630, Peter? Uh, 630 is the western suburbs of Chicago. Oh, uh, do they call that Chi Town? Or the Shire? <laughs> if I... uh, only people that don't live there call it Chi Town. Okay, good. <laughs> well, that would be me and uh, Jay Z. Uh, so, uh, mad love for Chi Town. What's your question for S. Jason? Uh, my question is, uh, I'm kind of the opposite of a prototypical startup founder. Yep. I am married, I have two children, and a mortgage. Ouch. So all those things, and a, and a job, all those things working against me. Um, but I still feel like I should be able to do a startup, or at least I want to. Right. Um, so let, let me give a little background on what I'm working on. Um, I'm making an online version of... Uh, trading card game like Magic the Gathering or Pokemon, but with a science and technology theme. Hmm. Uh, I think that there's that's a good business to get into for a couple reasons. Uh, number one is that all the games out there are fantasy-themed, monsters and magic. Right. And so with a science and technology theme, I would stand out in that regard. Uh, number two, there's lots of, lots of parts of the game that work well from a consumer psychology standpoint. Right. Buying a pack is like sure. gambling because you, you want to get something really great. Um, collecting is addictive. Take it from someone who's sure. pretty much every dollar he earned between the ages of 13 and 15 buying magic cards. Um, and because there's so much commitment to get into it, the people that play the game are really big fans. Um, the reason why I think I can succeed in this is because the games that are out there uh, are mostly driven by their brands because they've built up successful brands over the years, but they're not very good at the online version, the online game, uh, mainly because they don't want to take away the value of their physical cards. Right. They don't want yep. to risk, kind of like movies, movie companies don't want their I get it. To be online. I get it. Mm -hmm. So your, your um, question is what? My question is, given that I have limited time and money resources, mm. uh, but a good idea and skills that I think will help me succeed, uh, what can I do to yeah. make the most of what I've got? Uh, this is an excellent question. I get this all the time. Uh, married, I've got kids, I've got mortgages, I've got commitments. Can I do a startup? The answer is very simple, no. Uh, <laughs> thank you for calling. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Don't hang up. I'm kidding. Uh, Jason from a year ago would tell you before my wife got pregnant, this is absolutely impossible. You can't have a kids and be a startup founder. But now that my wife's pregnant, I'm absolutely believing that there is some way to make this work. But I'm also terrified of having no sleep and coming to this office and how much energy I'll have. Um, Fred Wilson of, uh, of AVC.com had a really interesting post about how all the most successful entrepreneurs he had were like in their 20s and older CEOs couldn't do it, blah, 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 blah. Uh, and for whatever reason, and I think there's a couple of things there. One is, your mind is very malleable when you're young and you are naive. So you can say, I'm going to make a social network that's better than anything that exists, even though there's a yeah. ton of them out there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm, or I'm going to do this. But, and that's what Mark Zuckerberg did or, you know, Bill Gates when he was young. So when you're young, you're naive and you can think about these really big things and go do it. Uh, and there is something to that. The, the young mind is very open to insane ideas and very risk-taking. As you get older, maybe a little less. However, Evan Williams from Twitter uh, is a second-time entrepreneur. And he's 30-something. He just had a kid. And he, uh, he's doing it with Twitter. So it can be done. Mm -hmm. uh, you're going to need help, I think, is the key thing. So you have to, I think the, the variables are, what is the scope of the project? Is the scope of the project building the largest social network on the planet with a billion people? Or is it building a game company that you know, is educational, et cetera? So I think you've already done yourself a really good service by picking something very niche and that you can accomplish. Uh, and then the second thing is, uh, you know, how long have you been an entrepreneur? You're a first-time entrepreneur, correct? Yes. Yeah, okay. So first-time entrepreneurs are different than your second, third, fourth time up to bat. By the time you get to your second, third, fourth time, it's like a director who's made three or four films. They, they have a track record for you and they can decide if they're going to invest in you or not mm -hmm. and, you know, what type of film they would invest in you. So if you've made schlocky you know, B films, uh, they'll pay for you to do another one of those. And if you made Dances with Wolves, they'll pay for you to make another one of those. But they may not let the guy from Dances with Wolves make scary movie, and they may not let the scary movie guy make Dances with Wolves, if you catch my drift. You have to know where you're at. And so I think what, if you have something that's, you know, kind of niche like this, what you may want to find is somebody who is like you, who is 
maybe had a successful exit, who has bank, and who may say, you know what, you've got a great idea and some energy for this. I have some money to put to work, and I'm also passionate about education and passionate about games. Uh, let's see if it's peanut butter and chocolate. The two of us wiser, older statesmen can hire some young folks to bust ass and make this happen. So, you know, I, I, it's totally possible. The question is, do you believe it's possible? And you have another dynamic, which is you have to get your spouse on board. So you have to talk to your spouse and say, listen, three years without me making a, you know, anything more than this salary, uh, you know, I'm going to be at the office, you know, these hours, et cetera. And, uh, you know, that, that's not every spouse is like that. When I got married, I had long conversations with my wife about this very issue, which was my DNA is I, I like to build things. I like to work. I don't see going to work as work. And I am always preoccupied. So that, you know, the, uh, what do they call that? Being present. You know, this is a thing that everybody's girlfriend wants to say, like, oh, you have to be present. Be pre you know, yeah. I'm not a present kind of guy. I got seven things on my processes. So my wife forgives me for not being present all the time because she knows I got a lot of stress and a lot of things, balls in the air and whatever. So really it depends on your spouse, uh, I think, and the scope of the project and maybe getting some help. Uh, and if you believe it, if you, if you don't believe you can do it, then forget it. Don't even try. Uh, but if you believe you can do it and the idea is that good, have the conversation with your wife, find a founder, uh, and make a plan. And, you, and that's what you really need to do is say, I will do this idea if the following things align. I find a founder who's willing to put in a quarter million dollars and give me you know, a $75,000 salary and understands my position. My wife buys into it. My husband buys into it. And this is the scope of the project and the, and the business plan. So a lot of planning, I think. What do you guys think? You guys have kids, families? I do. Yeah. yeah. You're military guys. You have to, right? <laughs> That's military right. guys. Well, it's get, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. When we started Ustream, for, for me, um, I actually had one kid already. Um, I, I'm married. And in early 07, I had my second kid. And then I left. My wife and kids were living in Dallas. I left Dallas to move to Silicon Valley for six months with John. Uh, we met up. You know, we, we already knew each other, but we decided to both go there. And, um, and, and raise money and start the company and it was it was a sacrifice and that's I mean we come from military backgrounds where that's pretty common yeah. military families and so um, it wasn't anything we haven't ever done before but the biggest key to, to, to the success for for me had been one have my family on board and just being very upfront and clear that the sacrifice we're gonna make and then uh, two having a guy I've known and trusted for a long time he got your back it. Exactly. So the, I think yeah. that's key. Well, maybe when you're older like that and you got the family, you need to have a partner more because if, you know, not if, when it hits the fan and it hits the fan at home and at the job at the same time, like, yeah. gee, my kid is sick and my wife is grumpy and the site is down, you can call <laughs> the guy like, listen, I got the trifecta right now. Yeah. I need to take care of this. Can you yeah, get absolutely. the developers and get the servers back around? It's like, I got your back, bro. Yeah, absolutely. So And I'm, and I'm married and I think... My, no kids yet? Um, no. Um, my two cents for Peter, I mean, in addition to everything that was shared, is just if you consider, like, operationally, um, if you really plan out things very well, I think you can leverage yourself more, and that can scale. So I'd really focus in on planning up front, laying everything out, um, and if you do that kind, rather than just showing up and reacting to the environment, just kind of have a plan, um, map it all out, and then you can scale and manage to that, so... So well, one nice thing about going in slow motion is that I, when I do have time to work on it, I usually pretty well thought out what I'm going to do and what value it's going to contribute. But you also got to commit. I mean, if, if, if you believe in it, I don't know anything about your space, but if you, I, I was working for the Perot family doing in a completely different industry, and I had a kid, and I left for six months. I mean, you just, in my opinion... If you believe in it, you have to commit. And if you if you really want to be successful, because like, like you were saying, what where's the gradient for you of where you want to take this? At some point, you have to you have to commit. And if you don't fully commit, that gradient's probably yeah. not. You have, you have to know when you're going to flip that switch. And did you talk to your spouse yet about it? Yeah, she's she's sort of taking a wait and see attitude at this point. Yep, um, that makes sense to me. Fair. Yeah, I mean, I think if you also think about the DNA of males versus females. Men, uh, this is psychologically proven. I don't mean to be a sexist here. Somebody will pull up some documentation to prove this. But women, by nature, are risk averse uh, because mm -hmm. they take care of kids and stuff like that. So she's going to think about it and be like, my number one priority is these kids and you know making sure that we're safe and the shelter and the food and all that kind of stuff. And then a lot of times, guys, and I'm painting with a white brush here, are 
crazy risk takers who are like, I'm going to go kill that buffalo or, or you know, that lion or something, and I'm going to go out and leave the home. So I think also appreciating you know, uh, how your particular spouse thinks, et cetera, is very important. You, know, you have to really put yourself in their shoes uh, with the empathy thing. But I hope that's a good answer, and keep us uh, apprised of how you do. All right, I will. I've got a website up right now, which is information about it. It's at Good. geekstack.com, if you want to take a look. Is it geekstack.com? Geekstack, yeah. I like that, geekstack. And, and the idea here is uh, people can learn from this idea. Uh, so it's like a game that's fun, and you're going to learn something. Right. I mean, take a, just ask any nine-year-old the, their encyclopedic knowledge of Pokemon, and you'll see how much uh, education you can get out of the game. I gotta tell you, this is a brilliant idea. It's a really, really solid idea, uh, and I'm surprised somebody hasn't done it. And I think that parents, you have a unique insight into that, would buy this. And I think, gosh, it seems to me like making cards is not that expensive. And mm-hmm. if you made a prototype of this and you know made a thousand packs of cards and brought it to, sold it on on your site and maybe brought it to a couple of stores. And maybe your wife would want to get involved in it if she's got a passion for it. But if you made one that just taught kids simply like. I don't know, history, you know, so Civil War people or people throughout history and they have different superpowers. Napoleon can do this and Genghis mm-hmm. Khan can do that and, you know, whoever, Caesar can do this with the superpowers but it has their statistics. I bet you you might get some people to do it. Uh, and you obviously have a great focus group with your kids. So, man, I'm, I'm liking your business. I think, I think you've got something cool here and I, and I, uh, I hope that you make it happen. Well, my, my plan is to get the online version so I can iterate through game designs until it's really good, then do small-scale printing of cards, mm. and then with some cards and online and feedback from real customers, then take it to stores and museums, gift shops, and other places it's where... a great idea. So what do you need? You need, a, you, need a de- you need a developer? Uh, who, what, what is your number one weak spot where you need somebody? Is it a salesperson, marketing person to get distribution? Is it a developer to build the site? Is it a designer to do the cards? Where's your big weak spot? Well, I'm a developer, okay, and good. I think I've got that fairly well taken care of, but what I would need is designer, okay. graphic design, artist, things like that, Okay. because I have none of those skills, and okay. that's going to be a big part. The presentation is so important for the okay. game. So we'll take care of that right now. Hold on a second. Uh, everybody who's watching the show, everybody who can hear my voice, I need you right now to do a tweet. At Geekstack, he's on Twitter, at Geekstack is looking for a partner with design skills to work on an awesomely cool project. If you are a great designer who's got some time on their hands and believes in education, please tweet at Geekstack. Uh, and let's try to get him a, a, a co-founder. And uh, let's try to get me like 10, 5, 5, 10% of the company for making this happen, Tyler. What do you think? We just crashed his website. Oh, sorry. We, we crashed. Don't worry about it. We, get, we can crash Geekstack. <laughs> it's no great. problem. We have Geekstack's Twitter account. Uh, everybody tweet. Everybody it. try to find Geekstack, a designer to work with him. We're going to make this happen. This is going to be like, I, we may, I want him calling back in in two or three weeks. I want to get the temperature on this. Okay, Alex? All right. All right. So we'll check in with you, but I want everybody to try to find you a founder. And you could go, uh, there's all kinds of local events that you have going on in your where, backyard. Where from? He's from Chi Town. From Chi Town. Chi Town, Chicago. Yeah. Got to be a founder nearby too. That he there's got to be founders nearby. Find one of these people laid off from like a you know who did brochures for some financial company or something yeah. who was being oppressed by the man, <laughs> and they, they'll just want to break out. And there's got to be some kids coming out of like isn't there school our school of design out of Chicago? Isn't yeah, that the big yeah. Chicago yeah. school of design is the big one? Yeah. Go go have coffee with the professor over there and say who's who's a really you know great person. Maybe you can find somebody. Uh, somebody's got to know somebody. Get on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a great resource. Uh, not a sponsor of the show, but a great resource nonetheless. I think, I, I think we, we're, we're done with uh, Reed Hoffman. Don't call me. We we can't take your money. We're done with sponsors. Uh, but uh, well, I also know some of the guys from Threadless, and so cool. They they know lots of designers and Texas. I got I'm going yeah. down to try to find help on this. Also, check out 99designs.com. 99designs, mm-hmm. you can put up something for 25 or 50 bucks. Somebody in India, Philippines, or home, or uh, Chi-Town, you know, Chicago Institute of Design. People just hang out there and do contests. Make one card and put one card on there for $50, uh-huh. okay? You have $50? Yes. You can do it for 50 Yes. Okay. Go on 99designs. <laughs> put a thing up there. Tell them exactly what you want made for 50 bucks. And then tweet it back to me at Jason Calcanis or give it to Alex. We'll promote it on the show or whatever. And let's see what somebody comes up with. 
four or fifty bucks. And if you need a hundred of these made, what are we talking about? Five large? Yeah. That's not that much. Maybe we get them to do a bulk discount, get it for twenty five hundred dollars. We have somebody in India or Philippines who twenty five hundred dollars is like five months' salary. Do this for you. We can we can make this happen. I could probably get an investor to call in. All right. So we'll talk to you in two weeks. Good luck with it, and uh, we're all rooting for you. Okay, Peter. Best of luck, Peter. Great, thank you. Good luck. Cheers. Bye. Good luck.